challenges, um, and, and we're talking, uh, I'm going to start to focus a little bit more on the, uh, uh, the coordination aspect of it. We know that it, depending upon the contract type, it starts late, sometimes too late to, uh, to avoid uh, costly time delays um, and to save money. Uh, number two, I'm going to quote a sub, uh, this is a recent discussion with a, a client who's a subcontractor and said, um, I fear when I hear the construction manager that we are going to work for tell me that he has a collision detection software package and that he is going to coordinate, quote unquote, coordinate the, mop, the VIM mop. And the reason he fears that is because so far what that means to him is the CM takes the, uh, the software package and runs collision detection and then hands over the collision report to the subcontractor. And any of you out there who have used this know that you may find thousands of collisions, particularly depending upon the software package you're using. Those collisions sometimes, uh, and most often, they're geometric collisions. So one collision that, that, that technically is, is one uh, constructability issue would show itself as two, four, six, eight collisions depending upon how many geometric planes are colliding with each other as, uh, as determined by the software. So this report gets handed to the sub and whereas normally the sub would go through his traditional process in a 2D world and identify what are major issues, now that the CM has provided him with, in this case we're saying 3,700 clashes, in order to, to cover himself, that sub has to go and, and check each and every one of those. Where, based on our experience, less than half of those will be actual clashes that they need to pay attention to. So it actually can hurt the sub, hurt the process, hurt the team. Um, uh, again, I mentioned it earlier, not leveraging the model to its full ROI, leaving ROI on the table. And that's what happens if you stop at your collision detection or coordination. Uh, not breaking out the, um, uh, the quantities by location. If you just simply take quantities by uh, uh, en masse of the overall project, um, you're not uh, helping the project to the degree that you could because, as we all know, that putting construction quantities in place in different locations, i.e., the higher you get on the building, the more, it can, the more it can cost to put things in place up there. So you need to be able to break it out by location. Um, and then finally, not using the information that the model will give you as to, to generate a schedule that has real science behind it. We, it, it, in our VECO services, have had a tremendous amount of experience. We started two years ago, actually, uh, is one of my uh, larger service projects. It was a, uh, a a large arena that we were building for uh, modeling for a client, and uh, in that instance, um, the the client we sat down with the owner, with the uh, construction manager, uh, who was our client, and we agreed that we were going to try and put together a coordination process that centralized coordination with the VECO services team instead of by trade, in other words, giving each one of the subcontractors, the, the mechanical sub, the electrical sub, the plumbing sub, um, and the fire protection sub, instead of them taking their own individual uh, pieces and going away and coordinating them and coming back to the table, we surmised that it might be better if we did this inside of the model um, and uh, and then had the subs weigh in on whether or not they agreed with how it was done. Lots of sort of uh, difficult um, uh, points along the way, uh, learning how important it was to get that sub input, what's the best way to get that sub input. Um, 
So we developed over the last two years in delivering what we call coordination by location or coordination resolution, uh, we've developed a process that really works effectively. And again, you're going to hear me say that a lot, process, process, process. Uh, and it starts early. Remember back on those things where tradition falls short, starts late. Well, this starts early. Um, and typically you can do it um, particularly with your primaries. You know, when you're going to get your primary and your main duct lines and trunk lines, um, starting to make sure those things line up, not just with each other from an MEP standpoint, but penetration, slab penetration, understanding on the structural side of things how to get those resolved. Uh, a lot of you that are engaged using BIM often are faced with the question, when do we model? Do we wait for the GMP set of drawings? Do, do, we, do we just take the, the architect's drawings? Do we wait till 100% CD? What do we do? And, and, and really, um, the, the earlier you begin to model in an effective way, the better off you're going to be. Because you're going to be able to begin that coordination process architecturally and structurally. And then, as you introduce main lines, um, uh, duct runs, et cetera, or primaries, into the uh, architectural and structural. Um, the final piece there, finalize coordination with the subs. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell a tale out of school. Uh, we, we thought when we first started in this coordination resolution process, that we were going to, you know, deliver a coordinated model. And the fact of the matter is, and what we've learned, uh, is that the subcontractor's input is absolutely imperative, always has been, always will be. What we do know is that following coordination by location, as we pursue it and as, as we do it uh, for our clients, you can minimize dramatically the amount of time that the subs have to spend on more frivolous uh, uh, collisions or clashes because those can be cleaned up very easily. And the time then given to them to focus on those significant, serious um, coordination issues that you really need that sub to weigh in on. In our process, we've created what we call our coordination report. And I'll I'll show you in more detail on that. But it gives the subs the opportunity that they have to have, but it shrinks the amount of time that it takes them to have that input significantly on um, the, the, the final result of coordination. This is an overview of the workflow. Some of you have seen this, uh, been with us before, um, but this is, uh, this is sort of a general overview of the workflow so you can see how our system, our process, and our software looks at it. And you know, the first thing you want to do is you, you want to get that coordination. You want to get the model set. You want to get it right. Um, because if you're going to be taking quantities uh, and scheduling off of the model, you want to get it set up. So during the design stage, as I said earlier, we do coordination by location. And we get that model really set. And, and, and our, by the way, our figures show that we can resolve 80% of the clashes following a, a, um, a uh, uh, system priority structure uh, protocol uh, and then relieving 20% of those clashes for the, uh, uh, for the subcontractor uh, or the engineer to weigh in on. Now, when we have that geometry in the model set the way that we want, that's where, you know, our software really begins to come into play in a it, it set up exactly the way you're going to pursue. It, it, the workflow and the modules are set up the way that you're going to pr pursue your pre-construction process. Takeoff items, depending upon the, um, the geometry, and then as we get into takeoff of quantities, identifying specific quantities. Uh, it's not just enough to say that here is the overall volume of this column. As we know, if, if we're taking construction quantities and we want to do uh, either time or cost estimating, we need to know specific things. If, for instance, if it's the form work, we just need to know the four surfaces of that column to determine what our form work costs are going to be. 
Of course, if it's the concrete, and we're going to place concrete in there, it's a cast in place uh, column, we of course need to know that volume. Um, cladding, surface area again, Rebar is going to be a little bit more of a, a, a formula driven that's going to be tied to the volume of concrete, but also is going to vary depending upon the rebar size. Uh, you can't just uh, you know, do a very general mathematical calculation and say you know, uh, rebar is going to be X, uh, X tons per cubic yard of, of concrete because it changes depending upon the location of where that rebar might be. Some of our clients may stop at that level, and that's our database works very well with that. Many of our clients, either they self-perform or they have a protocol or a methodology that drives them to get greater detail, they will go to the next tier and say, well, we want to know equipment, labor, and materials and specifically for those activities in the, uh, in the, in the prior tier of placing rebar, setting form work, placing concrete, and um, cladding or finishing the, uh, the, the element. All of this information transfers readily to a location breakdown structure. And we all know gravity makes us build from the ground up. However, we also know that we sequence projects. We also know that we're going to build them not just from the ground up, but either from the left to the right or from the back to the front from the northeast corner around to the southwest corner. There are always a, there's always a sequence that the project team has to sit down and determine what's the best way to build this building from a sequencing standpoint. Our location breakdown structure module enables you to set up those zones of how you're going to build it and automatically then incorporates all of the quantities of the, um, uh, the, the, the building elements into those zones. So if you see on your screen here, this, uh, by simply drawing a, a block around this for your location breakdown, says, OK, all of these columns and only this portion of the slab are going to be counted in zone 1. Same for zone 2, zone 3, zone 4. That information transfers directly to a scheduling program I said earlier, a schedule with a science behind it is something that a lot of owners want to see. So now we have the ability to say, we know the quantity, we know the location, we know the productivity. All of those are, 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 are able to be known from the model. So why not utilize that formula to generate a schedule? And so you can see, we can now take that and we can generate and even cost load that schedule very effectively, very accurately. 